Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at a ship that is actually in my personal port. This is the Napoli, the tier 10 Italian battlecruiser. Now I can't really compare the Napoli to anything. I've done a review I think when she came out but uh, she's I think in the shipyard or otherwise available because a couple of people have been asking me hey Terry is uh, the Napoli actually worth it? So it's about time that we revisit the Napoli. And by the way, I got the Napoli on out of a crate. Yes, uh, back when she was in a crate, I did a single crate pull and uh, bada boom tish, there was the ship. I have made a whole video about my approach to loot crates and gambling crates, so I'm not gonna go into any details on it now, but uh, the, to answer the question, is uh, the Napoli worth it? Let's have a very quick look at the stats. The Napoli is, well, like I said, it's a battle cruiser, or more like somewhere around super cruiser territory. Now, I personally usually don't like super cruisers, uh, with very few exceptions. This is one of them, <laughs> because the Napoli is fun. Uh, she's got a decent hit point pool, and uh, for for a cruiser, actually, a, so is, she is surprisingly well armored. The 17% Citadel protection is pretty good for a cruiser. The maneuverability isn't completely terrible. And uh, she is quite fast for a ship that size. The main guns are okay, but there's not really much about uh, to write home about them. Uh, they're 254mm, but they do have a 14 second base reload, so... Um, they're relative it takes a it takes them a relatively long time to actually get anywhere and uh, you get nine of them the high explosive is kind of meh uh, the armor piercing is pretty good no semi armor piercing on the main guns which is very unusual for an italian ship the the fun begins when we're looking at the secondaries so uh, the 152 millimeter secondaries and this by the way is is a is my particular build so we're going through the actual values that you're going to be seeing in game uh, the 152 millimeter or six inch main secondaries have a base range of almost eight kilometers and very very unusually they fire semi-armor piercing shells this is a blessing and a curse um a blessing in that you'll always have the right ammunition loaded to do uh, unpleasant amount of damage to light cruisers and destroyers. Uh, the curse in a way that if you're fighting against anything that's really heavily armored, you're having a bit of a problem because the semi-armor piercing is not quite having the same penetration as the armor piercing. But these things have a four second base reload. Base reload, we're getting there, yeah? <laughs> and an almost eight kilometer range. She also gets 90mm uh, auto secondaries. These things have a 3 second base reload. You get 6 twins of them. They can fire both sides. Oh yeah, and then we get 4 triples of the 150s. And uh, while they don't do an awful lot of damage for now, nah, because they're 90 millimeters, it's very, very small caliber, uh, they are fully automatic, so you don't have to worry about them. And they have a 7 kilometer range. Now, they also fire semi armor piercing, so their penetration is so minimum that mostly these are not going to do an awful lot unless they are hitting things like battleship superstructures, and uh, that's where they can start racking up some damage. You also get a set of very, very good torpedoes. These things have a 10 kilometer range, do 4000 base damage, and an only 50 second reload. You get two quad launches with, as typical for Italian cruisers, excellent uh, torpedo angles. The AA, yeah, it's forgettable, uh, but the concealment is very good as well. So with this build, we come down to a 7.6 kilometer surface detection. How did we get here? Let's begin with uh, let's begin with the elite bonus. The obvious choice here is to go for the secondary because that reduces the reload on both manual and auto secondaries by 10% rather than the main battery traverse. Because this ship really isn't about the main battery. The historical camo. Uh, doesn't really do much for the uh, for the secondaries, but it does help with the main battery range and also with the torpedo range to get it up to almost 10 kilometers. And it does help with the stealth build. Uh, so for that, uh, it's actually got a couple of pretty good values. Now, we don't get, unfortunately, we don't get the, uh, uh, the German 
equipment that we can use for uh, improving improving our secondary specifically. But uh, uh, we can get the secondary battery mod one for getting the reload down on the 150s. Alternatively, uh, we could also use the auxiliary armament mod for a 5% range on the secondaries and the auto secondaries. Given that the AA is very, very forgettable, um, I actually ended up sticking with the secondary battery mod one. And yes, this is a concealment build because the base concealment is very good. So we have a just over second, uh, over seven kilometer uh, concealment in this ship. This is a very stealthy ship and well capable of operating outside of uh, concealment range. Because there's one thing I haven't shown you yet. And that's the ship skill set, because this thing gets the secondary overload too. Uh, you get range and reload buffed by 25% for 20 seconds which means that with a concealment of uh, 7.6 kilometers and the auto secondary's uh, 7 kilometers base, <laughs> base range, you could actually <laughs> stealth auto secondary if you wanted to, but you don't need to because you also get a very, very good fuel smoke. Oh yeah, and you get three charges of the secondary overload. Oh yeah, and it reduces the reload by 25%. So <laughs> we're... We're getting down to almost 2%. This is a secondary monstrosity and uh, somewhat comparable to the sort of thing that you can do with German battlecruisers. Not 100%, but uh, the extremely fast reload and the, the extremely long range of these secondaries means that once you have the secondary overload running, uh, she will just start spitting out semi-armor piercing left, right and center. Now I do have uh, I do have Luigi Sansonetti here. Uh, he is usually on the Italian cruiser line, and as you can see, I haven't really gotten very far in terms of um, a, in terms of, uh, of upgrading him. He does have one skill that I am particularly after here, and that is the sixth sense skill. That said, if you are building, uh, and I probably will get a. Uh, we'll, we'll get another Italian commander and just specifically build him for this ship, because uh, I do want I do want the close quarters uh, qu close quarters combat expert on this one for the secondary dispersion, and I obviously do want the APCS because Sansonetti comes with the specific skill that buffs the semi armor piercing and the HE, no, but only for the main battery. And the Napoli does not have semi armor piercing on the main battery, and the HE is kind of crap, and you shouldn't be using it in most uh, unless you're firing at destroyers at point blank range. So uh, most of his skills here would be kind of going to waste. And uh, like I said, I would be I would be keen to go for for a close quarters combat expert build because it's all about it. That said, the sixth sense skill is very very useful because while you are a relatively well armored super cruiser you are still a super cruiser and things like vermont can uh, take half your hit points off easy in a single salvo so and yes because of the sheer size of the ship because this is let's face it this is a battleship sized ship uh, every battleship out there at tier 10 likes to shoot at you because you know you're a damage piñata <laughs> so uh my napoli uh, is this a good ship should you should be you be getting yourself one uh, let's go into some gameplay with this exact setup and uh, we'll see how it goes. The first round, base capture and encounter, everybody's favorite map, against uh, Midway, Kurfürst, Hin Double Hindenburg, uh, Black Shima and Double Gearing. The main guns with the armor piercing at mid-range are actually reasonably effective against destroyers because they do about a bit more than what you would do with a Hindenburg. And uh, while you don't get the precise aim and you don't have as many of them, uh, they hit pretty hard if they hit. But the fun really is in the secondaries here because of the hilarious range that you get on both the manual and the auto secondaries and this being semi-armor piercing, they are fully capable of uh, doing full penetrations on destroyers. Now the buffalo here decides that he doesn't want to have anything to do with this flank, but uh, I am going to accompany the Black Shima. Uh, just on the off chance, but carefully letting the Shima go ahead to scout and to see where the carrier goes first. Because the yeah the AA is not great. You're in a big ship, you're not the most maneuverable out there. And um, if carriers start focusing you down, things can 
you know, things can get pretty dicey. But uh, Black Shima is scouting, so with three destroyers on the enemy team, and he has found the enemy Black Shimakaze. Hello, Mr. Black Shimakaze. And I am not yet triggering the uh, secondary overload because uh, the Shimakaze obviously has instantly smoked up. And there will be Shimakaze torpedoes because I know he's been targeting me. So I'm fully assuming that there are going to be Shimakaze torpedoes in the water. And uh, I am going to have to go and dodge these torpedoes. So uh, that's that means... Even with the secondary overload, I'm not really going to be able to actually shoot at the Shimakaze. I don't want to waste it. So while we're dodging through these uh, and weaving through these torpedoes here and avoiding them all, the friendly Black Shima has gotten himself, well, obviously, uh, counter-spotted. So I do need to turn around, get back to the armor piercing and see that I can do a little bit of damage here. This uh, could have been better if I had gotten some better shots off at Shimakaze, but there's also a battleship back there. And I think there was only one battleship in the game, and that was Grosser Kurfürst. Now, to my uh, to my great surprise, the team is in lemming training. In fact, actually, the buffalo is holding the central position there, which is not terrible. And we've got one destroyer scouting the left, although he is up against the Hindenburg, which is not a good thing if you're in a destroyer. Uh, enemy Shimakaze is being torpedoed. And uh, there comes the Grosser Kurfürst. Now, first things first, we do need to get rid of that Shimakaze if we can. And uh, as you can see, if, if I stop shooting my guns, <laughs> uh, this ship is actually very, very stealthy. And this is what you can do with the armor piercing against the Shimakaze. Now, unfortunately, oh no, there he is, there he is. Okay, Shimakaze priority target. And uh, I do have to be careful about torpedoes, but I'm already going to launch... Okay, Grosser Kurfürst is slowing down, so I'm going to launch torpedoes at the Grosser Kurfürst. Uh, not going in fully broadside, because I am assuming there might be Shimakaze torpedoes in the way. And there's also a Hindenburg. Now I am being targeted, uh, so it's time to use the fuel smoke. And uh, secondary overload up and commence the Dakar. <laughs> the carrier is also in here, and that Hindenburg has has chosen the wrong moment to poke his nose out <laughs> and and he's dead and the buffalo takes him out um, so now we're up against the Grosser Kurfürst which in a super cruiser would normally be uh, a terrifying prospect uh, not so bad here because I do have uh, I do have backup from the buffalo I'm using the uh, I'm, I'm aiming at the uh, at the stern section with the 150s and unfortunately, my secondary overload has expired. But I do have some, um, I do have have some support from the friendly team. And yes, the Gorsa Corpus is hurting, but I can heal that back. And I have one thing that the Gorsa Corpus does not, and that's torpedoes. So uh, <laughs> while he is ge getting peppered by my secondaries, I am also going to be able to just send some torpedoes in. Uh, secondaries into the superstructure is generally a good uh, a good way of dealing some damage. Or the auto secondaries at the. Uh, Auto secondaries at the bow. Uh, Vermont has taken out the Grosser Kurfürst, and we should be relatively open. Unfortunately, at this point, it turns out that the rest of my team on the other flank has completely collapsed, and there is still a full health Hindenburg over there, so someone's gonna cut back and deal with our capture circle, which is gonna be a problem at this point. And uh, yeah, there are more torpedoes in the water. And there comes the carrier. Yep, there's no way, there's nothing I can do about it. There's no way to, uh, to avoid that. Uh, that carrier drop here so uh, unfortunately I am now gonna have to chase back into the friendly capture circle which uh, I'm gonna switch to high explosive because I'm not assuming that I'm gonna be actually uh, I'm gonna be actually uh, spotting the enemy destroyer which means that the hidden book is probably gonna finish me off so that now is the time to use the uh, the fuel smoke and uh, there will be a destroyer somewhere I'm set up for, yep, there come the Shimakaze torpedoes. I'm set up for uh, for close quarters with a destroyer, but uh, I don't have an awful lot of health left. And my auto secondaries are opening up at the destroyer that's just poked out. Yep, there's the gearing. So I did use the fuel smoke at the right time, but obviously the Shima is smoking up, has set a fire. And uh, I'm still being shot at by Hindenburg, so there's not an awful lot I can do here without sonar. And, uh, sh and everybody shooting at me. And... Uh, we get capped out before I get to destroy the Shimakaze. But uh, this is the sort of thing that you can do in the Napoli. So even though we haven't actually done an awful lot of damage, we still came out on top of the team, which is quite... Um, well, not impressive in terms of the damage that I've done, but... <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean.
anyway, um, so it looked so good, unfortunately, uh, the other flank completely collapsed. So obviously I went out again, and this time, once again, against a carrier, uh, Schlieffen Vermont Montana, uh, Jinan, Gearing and Shimakaze. Lots of torpedoes. And uh, obviously Vermont, thing, things like Vermont. Now, uh, something like the Schlieffen is a dangerous opponent. That said, <laughs> the Napoli is one of the very few cruisers in the game in which I would actually be comfortable taking on a Schlieffen. <laughs> because of the excellent fuel smoke. Because you can just avoid so much incoming damage by using the fuel smoke at the correct time. And uh, at the same time, you can engage it at a relatively long standoff range uh, with, uh, with the secondaries and the auto secondaries. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First of all, I am going to go left flank because one thing you don't want to have in the ship is you do not wish to uh, be cro be uh, be crossfired by big guns because this is a very large ship and it's at the end of the day still a cruiser. We've got uh, Colombo there in the Yamato, so uh, I am going to okay. Unfortunately, 12 kilometers. I don't have range at the Jinan. The range could be a bit better on the main guns, but uh, it's not much you can do. It obviously the carrier goes for me because why why would he not, right? <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I'm already trying to avoid as much as possible. I'm not going to waste the fuel smoke on the on the carrier torpedoes. It's an American carrier, so the dive bomber is actually more more dangerous than that. But uh, I can heal most of that back um, if if needed. So it's not it, it wasn't a terrible carrier strike. And now I'm going undetected again, which means I should be reasonably safe from incoming fire from the Vermont. And now I'm in the position where I actually want to be because I do want to run that flank, and uh, having. How did Jinan get himself spotted over there? I have no idea. But if I can get my my hands on Jinan, yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that'll be fun because these are relatively large main guns. But uh, I'm going to use that island there to just shield myself. Oh, and there is the Schlieffen. Okay, Schlieffen comes out here. That's a full health Schlieffen, unsupported. So let's go. Fuel smoke up, secondaries up, uh, torpedoes at the ready. And uh, once he is in range, uh, auto second, uh, uh, secondary overload up and go go gadget secondaries. I'm not even bothering with the main guns at this point. I am just unloading uh, the secondaries. And you see how the, how the 90 mils are hitting the superstructure and um, actually doing a fair amount of damage. You can switch to the main guns at times, actually. Uh, the Schlieffen had slowed down. Uh, there's the Jinan and uh, the secondary overload has expired. Now there are going to be torpedoes in the water from the Jinan. So these were the Schlieffen torps. So I do have to be somewhat careful. There comes also the carrier. Everybody sends their torpedoes out. So with uh, three on one, um, I am going to just turn out and disengage. But uh, the Jinan is still out there. So yeah, you're, you're playing too aggressively over there, mate. <laughs> you should have used that fuel smoke to get out of there. So I'm going to turn in just at the risk of taking some Jinan torps and try to get that thing done for. And now I'm just going to stop shooting my guns. There's the Jinan done. I uh, should have gotten a wide enough arc. Okay, the Jinan has unloaded at the end at the friendly Yamato. And uh, uh, we have our fuel smoke ready again if we need it. And the Colombo is helping out from the capture circle. Uh, one of the destroyers has broken through in the center. Not much I can do about it, but the Colombo is in the cup. So Colombo probably can deal with it. Hello, Mr. Schlieffen. It's us again, isn't it? <laughs> Secondary overload up. <laughs> and Daka. <laughs> and uh, Schlieffen is dead. All right. So that, that's that flank cleared up. Um, and yes, there is a. Uh, there come the Schlieffen torpedoes. Can't quite avoid all of them, but uh, most of them. And I still have a heal coming off. And that carrier, uh, that carrier really tried to get me dead at this point. And uh, the gearing, it's the gearing. He sunk our friendly Essex because um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's if he was AFK or or what has happened there. But the Colombo is is around right next to him, and the Christopher Colombo should be capable of blapping a gearing out of the way, and. Uh, so given that our flank here has pretty much collapsed, I can't remember what that smoke there was from. Uh, not sure, it might, might, might be a bug that the smoke screen doesn't dissipate there, because it looks also that the map ping um, is still there. But uh, hello, Mr. Essex. <laughs> you and me, we have um, unfinished business. <laughs> Come here, you, you carrier. <laughs> 
and off go the secondaries. So uh, yeah, that, that Essex is mine uh, very much. And there is still a Vermont, so I do have to be a little careful. But yeah, um, 254 millimeter main guns. And that is a very dead Essex, which means we are now going after the Vermont. Hello, Vermont. I think he is just out of auto secondary range, but about nine kilometers should be far enough that we can uh, we can get the secondaries up. And yeah, the, the armor piercing is not the greatest, so secondary overload up. And uh, well, that said, at the deck plating, we can still do full cleanse against the Vermont even. Uh, but the fun is all about the secondaries, so uh, Daka! <laughs> Go on, mine! <laughs> And Hindenburg takes him out. Okay, well, oh, Shimakaze. Okay, hello, Mr. Shimakaze. I've still got the secondary overload, so the the, uh, the auto secondaries at the other side are already uh, already unloading. And look at the laser precision on those 150s. <laughs> and I've got the main guns out, but Hindenburg takes out the Shimakaze as well. Okay, <laughs> well, it's a dead Shimakaze, and I am happy with that. But you, you can see the potential, um, and the Christopher Colombo is still playing with the gearing. Um, stop playing with your food, Colombo, just finish that thing off. Uh, well done to the Christopher Colombo for guarding the friendly cap, though. Otherwise, we probably would have lost, uh, lost to capping here. Um, is the Napoli a great ship? It's a fun ship. It's just like the, the German battle cruisers. It's a really fun ship. It's got long-range, hard-hitting torpedoes. It's got hilarious secondaries, but you're not going to set any fires with them. So you kind of need to know how to use them against harder targets. But uh, the sheer amount of damage that you can do with these secondaries is, um, is quite fun, uh, especially if you're not just being targeted by the, t by the enemy team. And uh, let's have a look. Yeah, we've done about... Um, We've done about 25,000 damage just with the secondaries, and we haven't even played in secondary range that much. But uh, if if you can play within secondary range more reliably and can use and can use island cover, this uh, ship is a very very nice combination of of damage output um, and uh, a good survivability. Uh, the obvious downsides is if you're getting focused by big guns, you are. Uh, you st you've got good survivability for a cruiser, but that's about it. Uh, that said, this is a great fun ship. Uh, she doesn't always do the most amount of damage, depending on how things go and what you what kind of situations you get yourself in. But you can have really, really good games in the ship as well. And I, com I like to compare her a bit to the German battle cruisers. She kind of plays almost a little like that, uh, just with the... Uh, if the enemy team lets you play in secondary range, which is seven kilometer base plus 25 percent from the overload then uh the the amount of damage you can do is is quite hilarious and uh, uh yeah it's it's a fun ship and uh, i'm willing to take on most things in a one-on-one -on -one in this in this ship and for me that's just you know that's that's just the important thing that it's a fun ship to play it's not super meta it's not going to it, it's pretty useless at long range because your main guns only have a 12 kilometer base range and if you get focus fired then you know there's little you can do about it but the combination of great firepower plus very good concealment plus fuel smokes plus hilarious secondary overload means that you have a lot of flexibility to deal with all kinds of situations and for that i love that ship so if you feel that that's something for you, um, well, here you go. <laughs> and uh, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.